All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Long from Long Media Films. This is Student Speak. Let's get talking. All right, today we are joined by filmmaker Sean Gormley. Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Awesome. Well, my name is Sean Gormley. Uh, I'm born and raised in Kansas. I've lived all over. I now currently live in Kansas City, um, Overland Park to be exact. Um, I have been doing film uh, of all kinds, from video production, uh, live broadcast, uh, personal projects since I was 16 years old. I actually had a teacher who handed me a camera and said, hey, you're a rollerblader, you're a skater, why don't you go do a science project on this? Why don't you go capture some video and, and come back and we'll do physics or something. And I just fell in love with the, the, the process of capturing, video, editing, and it just grew from there. Uh, I entered science projects, I won competitions, I then had an internship, um, and the last four years have just been trying to make my way into what is the difference between freelance and making money, and I've done music videos, wedding productions, uh, I work with Kevin Honeycutt a lot, which, you know, he was an inspiration to me when I seen the movie he made when I was 16 years old and to some, you know, last year to get a phone call from him asking me to come do work for him. It was the biggest aha moment of my life. And I think I sat down in my kitchen and, and cried, to be completely honest with you, because I felt like a dream can come true. So right now I'm just, just I'm a freelance, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to make a living doing what I do. So what really piqued your interest about filmmaking? In the beginning, it was capturing things in a way. We didn't have a lot of fancy tools, you know. I was able to take the same equipment, the same basic consumer equipment that everybody else had and create something professional. And I've always prided myself on that as being able to take whatever you have and get started. And I think that's kind of what separates me from a lot of people. A lot of people think, oh, I need to wait and go to film school. I need to do this. I need to... No, just take your iPhone and go make a movie. If you want to make a movie, just get started. And so for me, it was, it was being able to create something. Over the years, it's been the teamwork. I really... I like doing films of all kind, but when I get to collaborate and with somebody who's really good at editing, somebody who's really good at, you know, the artist, and we just take a project from nothing. It's just ideas on paper and formulate it into something that shocks the world, gets a million views on YouTube, you know. Um, I don't know if I answered the question correctly, but it's just the process of taking an idea and making it a reality. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a great answer. You definitely answered the question. Um... So what is life like after school, doing, going out in the field, making films, doing what you love? Life after school. <laughs> you always hear your parents say, I wish they could just go back to school. Because it's, it's true. Like I remember in high school when we were making films, that's all we did was just made films because we loved to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what you have to do is you have to balance reality and not lose your passion at the same time. And what I mean by that is you have bills and responsibilities, but somehow you've got to keep edging forward towards your end goal. You can never lose that. So I end up doing projects that maybe I'm not totally fond of, but I've had to train myself, like, say, weddings, for instance. Mm -hmm. I've started doing wedding videos, uh, highlight reels, because there's a lot of money, um, and I can pay my bills that way. And at first I was negative about it because it wasn't making a movie. It wasn't making a music video. But then it's challenged me and made me such a better cinematographer. And they have become short films for me. So I think, one, you have to struggle with keeping a good attitude. And you have to do things that maybe you wouldn't have done in school. But you got to remember you have to pay your bills, you know. And so find a way to, to keep your dream in line, you know, while you're paying your bills. So it's hard, just to be completely honest with you, for an artist, for someone who wants to do something, it's hard not to lose hope sometimes. You have, 
you have moments where it was just the greatest week ever. You have a big video release and people are watching it and sending it out. And then you got to start the process all over and, and uh, you realize the next project's not as exciting, but you know you have to do it because you have a car payment, you have rent, you have a cell phone bill. And you got to remember, I'm still making video. I'm getting paid to make video, you know. So it's, it's hard, but it's, it's worth it, you know. I hope that answered your question. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any specific directors or filmmakers in general who have really inspired you to become a filmmaker? Yeah. Well, Kevin Honeycutt is the first one. Um, he's an inspiration in every area of my life. Um, I don't know how much time you've got with Kevin. Have you had a chance to, to hang out with him? Uh, I don't think I've gotten a chance to talk with Kevin yet. My advice to you is is as much connection as you can. Um, but he's been my number one inspiration in all areas, but specifically film. Um, number two, uh, on a bigger scale, J.J. Abrams is probably hands down one of my heroes because he writes, he directs, he produces, he's hands-on. Everybody has nothing but good to say about him. Mm -hmm. And I hope that that's the kind of legacy that I leave is, is I was willing to do everything. I held the chords. I held the camera. I wrote the script, you know. Um, so he's a humongous inspiration to me. Um, I have some local inspirations, uh, Brett Borkman from Storylight Studios here in Kansas City. He's just taught me a level of, what am I trying to say? He taught me how to be content with what I have and always do the best with each job and always learn. So that's from my past, from my future, and like J.J. Abrams is probably my biggest Hollywood inspiration. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that being on SCTV staff. Uh, a lot of times if we want to go out and shoot like a skit or a documentary, it's uh, you got to do what you got to do because of the lack of like big crew and how much money you have. And that sort of uh, style of filmmaking is what I personally like about it. And so uh, I can definitely see where you're coming from there. Especially when you're hanging on by the skin of your teeth. You're like, you're the only one believing. And, and like the music video I did with Nate Evans, I just directed it. I didn't film it. I didn't, you know, but I planned that big end scene. And we had to call so many people. And it was just down to the very end. Mm -hmm. But it made the project complete. So somebody, each person brings something to the table. And I love that. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, going back to sort of a style, what kind of style as an independent filmmaker do you go for? Uh, <laughs> I like to be as edgy and as groundbreaking as possible. No matter what we're doing, I'm saying, and I think this is from my time with Kevin Honeycutt, but I'm like, how can we push the limits? But... I'm not afraid to get down on my knees and tilt the camera and get an angle that nobody else would. So how do I describe that in words? I feel like I'm edgy, creative, uh, and I try to push the limits with whatever we have. And I have high expectations. So I don't, I don't know how to answer that in words, but I don't. Yeah, I think, I think you just sort of did, uh, answer it. So, uh, to sort of wrap this up, are there any words that you would like to say or any advice you would give to an upcoming filmmaker? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is an honor to be able to get to say this. My mistakes is I lost focus at times, um, especially coming out of school. You need to, well, before you come out of school, like you, I have respect and admiration for you because you have a YouTube channel. You're doing it. You, you building a following, you're, you're reaching out to people, don't stop. Don't get caught up in all the work and don't get caught up in college. Like, do your work, but be doing what you're supposed to do before you get out there. You know, if it's films, be making films now, no matter how good, how bad they are. If you have that resume, you know, go do work for free, do whatever it takes but just constantly continue building your dream. 
and uh, just don't get sidetracked. All right, to wrap this up, I want to thank Sean for being here. Sean, where can we find you on any sort of social networks or Twitter, Facebook, if you have like a Facebook page or a YouTube channel? Sure. Um, well, I have Sean Gormley Films at Facebook. Um, and that's You can see how to spell my name and just films. Then there's also, um, you can friend me on Facebook from there. Uh, Twitter is at SG Films. Uh, and those are the basic places. There's an about me, but that's I spend most of my time on on Facebook or Twitter lately. Um, so that's that's where you can find me. All right, I want to thank Sean again for being here today. It was an honor being able to interview you today. Thank you, thank you. It was awesome. Proud of you guys. All right, this has been Ryan Long and Sean Gormley. This is Student Speak, and we'll catch you guys next time.